Hey piano people! In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to solidify your piano memory with one method. This method is going to help you take everything you've learned and commit it to the deeper layers of memory, and this is going to make your playing sound so much better, even if it's not your ultimate goal to play from memory. To learn this method, we'll be using Fur Elise as an example by Beethoven. And make sure you stay tuned for the entire video because I'm going to share the method with you and then I'm going to show you exactly how to practice it. Hi, I'm Ashley. Welcome to Ashley on Music Studio where you are going to learn how to practice smarter, not harder. Let's dive in. The method that's going to help you solidify your piano memory is called the theory to music connection. Let's talk about exactly what that means and let me show you how to do it. So if you're already here watching this video, then you likely understand the importance of studying music theory. And maybe you're even spending time each day working with a music theory app or a music theory workbook. But I want you to take your music theory studies one step farther than that. And this is something that most adult piano players don't do. The theory to music connection is all about taking what you learn in your music theory studies and applying it to the pieces that you are learning so that you start to make the connection between the music theory and what's happening in your actual pieces of music. When you're learning a piece of music and you start to look at all of the symbols and all of the notes on the page as context with your music theory, you start to immediately be able to learn things on a much deeper level, which helps you express yourself way more beautifully at the piano. Let me show you. So let's say you've been studying chords in music theory, okay? And you've been just looking at triads. And then with your pieces of music, you're learning how to play for a lease. At a very simple and basic level, one of the ways that you can do the theory to music connection is you can try to find the chords that you're learning in your piece of music. If you do this at a very simple level, you might notice that the left hand is alternating between two chords in this piece for Elise in the very beginning. Now, this is helpful for a variety of reasons. First, from the beginning stages of learning a piece, if you recognize these chords, you wouldn't be trying to read these notes as individual notes. So as you were looking at the piece for the first time, you wouldn't be thinking, okay, this is an A, and then this is an E, and then this is an A, and then this is an E, and this is an E, and this is a G sharp. You might just be able to see, oh, okay, this is one chord, and these notes also make up the next chord and we're gonna talk about what those chords are in just a minute. Because as you practiced and as you got more familiar with the piece, you might start to even recognize that this is just a broken A minor chord and that the next left hand pattern is an, a broken E major chord. And then you might even start to recognize that these are just alternating back and forth for the first eight measures of the piece and your left hand is really just going between these two chords. And that recognition would help you play the left hand a lot more fluidly, much faster. Now, after you had learned the entire piece and it came time to try to actually play through the piece with musicality and fluidity, in other words, solidifying it in your piano memory, you wouldn't just be relying on the sound of the piece or you wouldn't just be relying on trying to remember these individual notes. You would just know, okay, I have a broken A minor chord and then I have a broken E major chord and then I have a broken A minor chord and then I have a broken E major chord. And you would be able to actually commit that context or the names of those chords into your memory from a music theory standpoint. Isn't that cool? Just by knowing the names of two chords, by knowing what an A minor and an E major chord are, you would be able to memorize a lot of the left hand in the piece for Elise. And you'll find that this is true with a lot of pieces. It's not that there are just hundreds and thousands of notes in a piece of music. Those notes actually make up different chords and other different music theory type patterns. Now I want to show you some other applications of this method, but first, if you are learning from this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment below, let me know what you like about it. Subscribe to the channel because I release new content every single day and copy the link and share it with a friend or with a community of adult piano players so that they too can learn about this method that is going to help them solidify their piano memory. Back to Fur Elise. Now let's say that in addition to knowing that this was a broken A minor chord and that this was a broken E major chord, let's say that in your music theory studies, you've also been learning about the one and the five chords. So you are able to recognize that this piece for Elise is in the key of A minor. And you're able to recognize that because we're alternating between an A minor chord and an E major chord, we're actually just alternating between the one chord, in other words, the chord that's built on the first scale degree, and the five chord, in other words, the chord that is built on the fifth scale degree. And let's say that in your music theory studies, you learned that in the classical period, which is where this piece is from, you're going to encounter those one and 
five chords all the time in pieces of music. And so you even knew to expect this. When you first opened up the piece of music, you saw that it was in A minor, and you knew you were gonna see a lot of A minor and E major chords. You would have actually gone into this piece having an idea of what kind of patterns and chords you would see before you even started learning it. And this is awesome because so many adult piano players make the mistake of just learning a piece of music over here in this category and then studying music theory over here in this category and they don't ever spend the time to connect the two. But when you start to make that connection, you solidify your memory at every stage in the learning process. It's easier to recognize the symbols on the page when you open up the piece of music. It's easier to learn the piece because you have more of a context of the notes being patterns as opposed to individual notes. And then it's much easier to play with fluidity because you can make sense of these repeated patterns instead of just trying to remember all the notes. So if you're newer to music theory and maybe you haven't started studying a ton of music theory yet or you're at the beginning of your music theory journey, I would highly recommend that you check out this free workshop that I did a few months ago. It's called Speed Reader. And in that workshop, I talk about the steps that you can take that are very simple to be able to sight read with more flow and accuracy. And uh, one of those steps is learning a lot more about musical patterns aka music theory and you'll learn how to make that connection between what you're studying in music theory and what you see on the page that free workshop is available i'll link it on the end screen and also in the description below but if you're at more of an advanced stage with music theory i would recommend that you get a theory book and start studying music theory regularly it doesn't have to be a lot during every practice session but even just a couple of minutes each day is really going to make a difference i have an amazing theory book that i recommend to all of my students and i'll link that in the description as well and i'm also going to link another tutorial tutorial for you about the different types of memory and how to practice to strengthen each type of memory with any piece that you learn on the piano. You can grab that tutorial and that free workshop right here on the end screen. Happy practicing.